안녕하십니까? Nicolas in the island. Today's video, I want to show you how we can use AWS Amplify to build real-time serverless applications in as little time as possible. AWS Amplify is a set of tools and features that we can use to generate applications with user authentication, backends with REST and GraphQL APIs, notifications, file storage, and even AI. All this by writing a very minimal amount of code. Before we get started, I would like to invite you to the biggest IT conference in Korea. AWS Summit Korea is a free online conference that will have more than 90 talks for developers of all levels, where you can learn about the newest and most useful AWS products like the one we are going to be using today. This summit is for developers of any level, from beginners to advanced. It will also have keynotes for business leaders and decision makers, and we will also be able to listen to keynotes from legends like the CTO of Amazon.com. The summit is 100% free, so all you have to do is to click the link below to register and be able to watch. First, we install the AWS Amplify CLI using NPM. Then we run the command amplify configure and that is going to open the AWS website. We have to log in and when we are logged in, we press enter. Then we choose the region. I am going to choose Korea and then we're going to choose a username for our API key. After we do that, we are going to go to a form to create our API key. We're gonna click next, 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 next and then create user. There we're going to copy the access key ID and we are also going to copy paste the secret access key. After that, we will create a profile name. Using create react app, we're going to create a new application. Then we're going to go inside of the folder and we're going to run amplify init. There we're going to say yes to all the questions. And we're going to choose the AWS profile that we created before. After that, we're going to run Amplify Add API to create a new API. We are going to select GraphQL. We're going to say continue. We're going to choose the blank schema. And then we will say yes to open our schema in Visual Studio Code. The schema will be in Amplify Backend API and schema.graphql. In this schema, we will create a new model type called tweet. And we're going to say that the tweet is going to have ID, text, and author. After that's done, we're going to run amplify push. We will say yes to everything, and we will tell amplify to generate JavaScript code for the mutations, queries, and subscriptions of our API. Then we will wait for a couple of minutes and our API will be ready. Then we will run Amplify Console API to open our GraphQL console. And there it is. We have a playground for our API where we can already get started calling mutations, like for example, create tweet. These mutations have been automatically generated for us. We also have queries as well. And here we can see the queries, the mutations, and the subscriptions that have been created for us automatically by AWS Amplify. And that's it. We now have a GraphQL API. As you saw, we didn't have to write almost any code. Everything was generated for us automatically by AWS Amplify. If you want to learn more about AWS Amplify and all the things it can do, on the AWS Summit Korea, there will be a talk where we will learn how to build cool things like a serverless call center using Amazon Connect and Amplify. In addition to the Amplify session, there will be other sessions on other IT trends and technologies, like for example, how Korean airlines used blockchain to digitize logistics. How cool is that? To connect Amplify with our React application, we are going to install AWS Amplify in our project. 
Then we configure Amplify by importing Amplify and a generated file that was created for us with our keys. To make the UI pretty, we are going to include Pico CSS. For the UI of our application, we're going to have two sections. One will be a form where the user is going to write their name and their tweet and a button to post it. And on the other section, we are going to have the timeline where the user will see their tweets. To bring the tweets from our API, we are going to import Amplify and we are also going to import a query called list tweets. This query was generated automatically for us. We also have mutations generated automatically and we also have subscriptions generated automatically as well when we pushed our API before. The tweets are going to live on the state and I am going to make a function to fetch the tweets from the API and put them in the state. This function is gonna run only once when our application loads for the first time. Then we're going to render the tweets using array.map. And as you can see, the tweet that we created before, it's now in our UI. The form to upload a tweet is also going to live on the state. So we have to create on change event handlers and we have to connect them to our input and our text area. Then we import the create tweet mutation that was generated for us before. And on the on submit function, we're going to call that mutation when the form is submitted. Now we should go to the page, fill out the form, and when we press post, the mutation should be called. So if we refresh, we would see our newest tweet on top of the list. To make everything real time, we are going to import the on create tweet subscription that was generated before. Then we're going to create a new function where we are going to subscribe to those updates. And when there is a new tweet coming in, we're going to put it in our state. Now we can open our page in two different browsers and we can see that the messages sent from Firefox appear in the Brave browser and the messages from Brave browser appear in Firefox in real time. And we are done. We now have a real time serverless application that before would have taken us hours to build and that instead took us minutes to finish. And this is not all Amplify can do. If we want to add authentication to our application, it will take us minutes to do so. Amplify will give us a user backend using AWS Cognito and Cognito will handle wrong passwords, email confirmations, and even phone login as well. And also, if we wanted to save even more time when making the UI of our application, we could use a set of pre-made cloud-connected Angular, Vue, React, and Flutter components called Amplify UI. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more Amplify content. Maybe we take this app and we develop it a little bit more. We add authentication, we add notifications. I don't know. You let me know. And don't forget to register to the AWS Summit Korea. It's 100% free and 100% online. Now all you have to do is click the link below to sign up. See you there. Stay free, stay happy, stay healthy. Kamsamida, Saranheyo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.